swelling sea. Then shall the warlike Harry, like himself, assume the port of Mars. And at his heels, leashed in like hounds, should famine, sword, and fire crouch for employment. But pardon, gentles all, the flat, unraised spirits that have dared on this unworthy scaffold to bring forth so great an object. In this cockpit, hold the vasting fields of France. Or may we cry within this wooden O, the very cast that did affright the air at Agincourt? But pardon, since the crooked figure may attest in little place a million, and let us, ciphers to this great account, on your imaginary forces work. Suppose, within the girdle of these walls are now confined two mighty monarchies, whose high upreared and abutting fronts the perilous narrow ocean parts asunder! <laughs> Peace out our imperfections with your thoughts. Into a thousand parts divide one man and make imaginary puissance. Think, when we talk of horses, that you see them printing their proud hooves in the receiving earth. For tis now your thoughts that must deck our kings, carry them here and there, jumping o'er times, turning the accomplishment of many years into an hourglass. For the which supply, and met me, Chorus to this history, who prologue like your humble patience pray, gently to hear, kindly to judge our play. <laughs> <laughs>